All right, what's going on, folks? Hope everyone's doing well. Welcome back to another episode of the Bordello. I'm here outside with Dilo. We got fucking screwed over last week, bro. We recorded the pod a couple days before it came out, and a ton of news came out between the time we recorded it and the time it was released. Maldini was sacked or resigned. Or uh, what's the difference? I mean, he he was he was uh, no longer. He was deemed no longer on the same terms as management at Milan, and uh, they let him go. Some The American guy, Jerry Cardinale, let him go. Uh, Maldini wanted to do it his way. Um, whatever. So that happened. We we totally glossed over that. Um, or we didn't gloss over that. We, we, we fucking skipped over that. We didn't discuss that at all because it hadn't happened yet. Um, so that was last week. And, and the news was too much to bear. For one, Silvio Berlusconi and his little heart, his little feeble heart, after busting 27,000 nuts last week alone just to cope with the state of Milan. He kicked the bucket this morning. Silvio Berlusconi is dead. He's passed away. The former prime minister of the Italian Republic, one of the most iconic figures in, I guess, um, Italian society of, of the last hundred years is dead um i'm shocked not because um he you know not because it was sudden not because there was no indication that he was unwell but because i thought he would live forever uh and i think so did he so did he he ran for office like seven months ago dude he ran for office seven months ago and um yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty, it's pretty great. Inter lose a Champions League final, and then lifelong Milanista Silvio Berlusconi can die a happy man. <laughs> you know, he can die a happy man with the right and power, having gotten away with everything he's ever done, having beaten every single case. He, <laughs> and he, he, he lived long enough to, um, you know, what happens is right when you become a powerful guy, people start to throw mud at you. People try, people try to drag you down, and they start to. Talk about things you might have done, may or may not have done. They, they'll, they'll allege that you fucked a 16-year-old um, Libyan prostitute. That's going to happen eventually. If you're in politics for a number of decades, eventually that's going to happen. So he lived just long enough to see his impeccable reputation, which saw him bring showgirls to the mainstream in Italy. An illustrious career, which saw him bring basically sex to television. Um... He, so he, he stuck around just long enough for that that glowing reputation to be you know dragged through the mud and and there were court cases over um, the last decade that he's been fighting and he he wound up taking them to the grave. He wound up taking them to the fucking grave. He's probably um man he's like the last of is was he was like the last of like that. Was he the last? He was one of the. He was like one of the. In my mind, anyway. I think he might have been one of the last guys cut from that cloth. That Italian playboy, you know, who's going, who's going to be very open about. Like, I like nice things in life. I like, you know, I like nice food. I like nice clothes. I like nice pussy. It's, you know, <laughs> that was kind of his thing. He's very open about it. Um, but like, people make movies about guys like him. And here's the thing: it's a lot more charming in movies than it is in real life. You know. Um, People see movies and, and they think it's cool. You watch old Italian movies from the 50s and 60s, which is kind of the era that he came up in, right? When he made his money. And guys like him exist. Reading the newspaper in a suit. Buonasera. Ciao. You know, you know. Posso darle un complimento. You know, like, <laughs> like people spoke like that in movies. And the cool thing about Berlusconi is he kept speaking that way throughout his life. Even in politics in like the 2020s, he still spoke with the same theatrical... In the, same, in the same theatrical way, but the same theatrical mannerisms, you know? And, um, you know, it, it's um, it's a shame he's gone because he was very entertaining. He posted a TikTok last year. He goes, Ciao ragazzi, eccomi qua. Benvenuto sul mio canale ufficiale di TikTok. Like, his, everything was very, very um, theatrical in a very northern Italian way. Very Milanese man. He's a very Milanese man. Um, it's the type of guy you would really expect to own a, a football club, you know, Just be a be a playboy and and 
you know, um, fucking like sponsor an F1 team or something. Like some people, like like Gianluca Porru was on the pod a few months ago. He has a page called Vintage Classics. It's a great page. It's cool. It's vibey. Um, but like he, the whole page is just based around like the Silvio Berlusconi lifestyle, and people follow it because they want to. You know, they will never live like him, very likely, right? But people like to see it and live vicariously through images of the past, right? And he can't do that anymore. He couldn't do it anymore because because of social media and because, um, you know, he stuck around long enough to become powerful, that he made enemies and such. But he was just a part of, like, Propaganda Due, like the underground um, back... Like, it, was like a, it was like a secret society that basically ran Italy. It was a bunch of Masons in, like, the 90s, the church and, and uh, powerful politicians and such and, and business figures and he was very much involved in that world and he was able to do that quietly and fuck who he wanted and and you know um yeah i mean it would have never it would have never made the rounds like the fact that we know what a bunga bunga party is uh is only a thing because he, he was born just maybe like 20 years too late you know if he was born in 1910 like john Yanielli was uh, a little more subtle but he probably had very similar very similar uh, taste and such. He lived a very similar life. The thing with Berlusconi is he was flamboyant. He was like like the quintessential Italian playboy in many ways. And he still owned a club until like two weeks ago. He was in the Monza dressing room giving them a speech saying, you, did, you guys did a great job. You know, and he was, and he never changed. He was offering them hookers and, you know, for, for wins. Like on video. Like it's completely, uh, it's, you know, because people are fucking, people are pussies. It's completely... Um, unprofessional. It's deemed completely unacceptable. You can't do that. Like, it's maybe almost even illegal to, like, impl imply or invoke, like, sexual innuendo in a professional setting. And he did it on camera. Nobody cared. You know? Batete la Juve. Here we go, bro. Un pullman di troie. Un pullman di troie. And he, he, would, do, he would do this a lot with his, with his hands. He was, he was a very Italian man. There's no other way to really describe it. Like, he kind of ascended to the, the highest levels of italian society just being a very italian man he kind of in some ways was a, a very new a new wave italian man because you know a lot of the um a lot of um what we see in italy now is kind of because of him and, and everything that he spearheaded it might have got to that point anyway but it was because of him and all the shit he did um to kind of like lay the groundwork for italy becoming like uh, obsessed with like trash television and such you know that's because of him we have him to thank you know um Political scandals, he's, you know, he gave us that. They've always been around. There's always been, like, corruption in Italy. I mean, it's it's been part of the fabric of society. But he he was very uh, flamboyant about it. He was almost like John Gotti. It's like a Gotti, very, you know, very, very flamboyant. And so um, I feel like political scandals came more into the mainstream with him. Um, made it more acceptable and cool to, you know, go through a political scandal, right? Like, now you accuse a guy of anything. And you find out that, like, an investigation is ongoing. And you think, well, he'll beat it. Because the benchmark has been set. He set the precedent, you know. And here's the thing. Like, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, people thought Italians were just fucking, you know. I mean, there was Italian cinema that was exported around the world. But it was very simple. It was very... Vita bella vita. Simple. I take you to Amalfi. This is Amalfi, this is Rome, this is si this is the city, and we where we ride around on a scooter, and that kind of still exists, you know, Under the Tuscan Sun, that's a movie that was made, like, in the last 20 years, it's, it's kind of still an image that's, that's promulgated, but I would argue that um, that probably had less of an impact than Italian-American culture, and, like, like the Mafia, and uh, The Godfather, and all that shit, which, you know, um, led to, I don't know, just, just further ideas about Italians kind of being pushed. A lot of that was Southern Italians, um, or a lot of those ideas were kind of like um, effectively like the ideas that people had of Italians in like the 20th century I think around the world were like in large part um, rooted in like southern Italian culture and also like southern Italian immigrants you know so the fucking red and white tablecloths and shit and then Berlusconi kind of modernized that a little bit you know uh, white tablecloth white tablecloth um, you know and and um, in a lot of ways, he just sort of, I don't know if he really, here's the cool thing about him. He, he wasn't really a man of the people at all. Like, he wasn't a man of the people at all. But because of the way he spoke, because he just kind of um, rolled with the punches, people were like, ah, oh, he's 
he's he's charming. He was like a rich version of your uncle. Um, just anyone's uncle, not your uncle. I'm, you look a little confused there. Like I'm, <laughs> like I'm looking at you, Dilo. But but no, like like one's uncle. You know, he's 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 a little little fun, but he's wealthy and successful. And he kind of like paved the way for the likes of Trump. You know, saying whatever the fuck you want. And um, now he's dead. And I mean, yeah, he he sort of. I don't know that he actually, like, cared a lot for his fellow man, you know? But, like, if, if most businessmen are sociopaths, he was very... He was very charming about it. You're smiling. But you know what I'm saying, right? You know what I mean? I get you. Like, he wasn't, um... Like, like Bill Gates, you know, might be a sociopath, but he has no charm. He's rich, but he's weird. We're gonna vaccinate these Indian babies and we're going to do this because there's going to be a pandemic it's like dude like he has no tact but Lusconi could have come out and said what did that do? ci saranno ci saranno alcune malattie pero you know like there will be some diseases but it's okay it's, you know we will we'll deal with it and it, it is what it is and have, have some champagne you know have champagne here Look at this lady. Look, look at her ass. Guarda la viga. Guarda quando bella. Come, come. You put it. You you put it in her ass. My favorite. My favorite. Um, Berlusconi moment ever was when he met uh, Barack Obama at a. Um, I think it was a G7 summit or something. He didn't actually meet Barack Obama. I should say. Uh, rather, he he was in a room with Barack Obama, and every one of the heads of the G7 states. Might have been G20, but. They were all taking a picture for a photo op, and right after the picture was taken, Berlusconi, who's like the shortest man in the room, walks over to the he <laughs> the leader of the free world, the head of the United States government, most powerful military the world has ever seen. And he kind of does this like De Niro, and he goes, Mr. Obama! Mr. Obama! And this is after he had said that Michelle was... Uh, was like was was good for was was good for a fucking shagging or whatever, and he said Obama's a little tan. He said he's you know he's a good man. He's a little tan for my liking, but you know, and it's like he just said it se seamlessly. You know, and here's the thing. Do you think that man's racist? No, no, you don't. He'll be like, I employ. He goes, there are tons of black players on my team. I love them. I love to fuck their wife. I love all women. I love all. That's the thing with him. He would always go back to women. He would go like, I'm not racist. I love fucking black women. <laughs> <laughs> that was his thing. He'd be like, I imported black women from Nigeria last week. What are you talking about? I'm not racist. You know? And he was, it was almost condescending. Like, it should have been condescending the way he would speak to people. But it was charming. The people in Calabria loved him. They voted like crazy for Forza Italia last year in the election. Look, I have uncles who love him. I have a grandfather who hates him, by the way. Like, I actually, because I, you know, when you're like a kid, you're like a, a mouthpiece for the people around you. Uh, my grandfather, who was a socialist and ran for the NDP in uh, Papineau in Montreal in the 80s and affectionately referred to my father as Reagan because he just was in business school. Um, but it was a bit of, it was, you know, it was in jest, but it was kind of like in a father-son way, but it was, it was kind of like, oh yeah, all right, you fucking Reagan, you, all right, you know. Um, kind of like a shrug of the shoulders as if to say, all right, it is what it is. My son, I, got a, I got a capitalist pig of a son. And... Um, Anyway, so my grandfather didn't like Berlusconi, and when I was in uh, grade 10, I wrote an article. I wrote an outbed in my school's newspaper talking about how nuts it is. And the whole bit was basically, yo, he's a prime minister and he owns a soccer team. That's nuts. That'd be like if Stephen Harper, who was the prime minister of Canada at the time, owned the Flames, the Calgary Flames, a hockey team. And that was like pretty much my whole shtick. But it was enough to get me honorary citizenship of the town of Filine Veliaturo, where we come from, because there's not a whole lot going on over there, to be honest. And the mayor is our uncle. So, you know... Corruption, right? Again, like like it exists at every level, but but um, he did it seamlessly. He did it in your face. It was perfect. It was beautiful. And um, again, I don't know that he really thought that highly of like the southern Italian people, but I think he kind of found them charming. But in a way that's almost condescending, where he's like, "Yeah, I love them. They're great people. Very, pa you know, very, 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 very colorful people. Very warm stuff. You know." Then he would talk about like you know. Lombardia, Piemonte, we have, we have to make money. We got to make money somewhere, right? Rome is where the corruption is. The north is, you know, the northern regions are where the, the money's made. And then the south is where, you know, 
the flavor comes from. It's kind of like a an idea that he probably took to the grave. That's not a. That's not a. That's not really a, you know an idea that <laughs> that you would think a, po a head of state might have. You know, you'd think that they'd be very like patriotic and be like you know, I go around to all these places and I speak to people and I, I you know I, I listen to their issues and stuff. He probably never really thought any of that he, he he probably never even really listened that's the thing with him you always got the feeling that he never listened when you would speak to him you know because he always just wanted to say something witty charming he loved being loved that's the only reason why he went into politics you know you know he why do you think he ran for uh, why do you think he ran for office again is because he just wanted to do it it was something to do he thought he was going to live forever um but yeah he was like oh, obama's a good guy he's all right but you know he's uh, a little tan it is what it is Mr. Bama. Do you have the video of Mr. Bama? Maybe just uh, pull that up. Maybe video. There we go. Oh, no. This... No, this is, you're, this is a proper meeting that you're, that you're finding here. This was like a photo that they took. Michelle Obama keeps Silvio Berlusconi at arm's length at G20. That's the thing. So he had come out and said shit about her. And he wanted to, like, give her a big hug. And she was like, yeah, get this get this little, you know, Italian grease ball away from me. But in some way, that's kind of like a, a great uh, ambassador for Italy to the world. Like, a lot of people are like, he's an embarrassment to Italy. Who do we think we are? You know? Who do we think we are? We need this, like, diplomatic, like, statesman-like guy. I don't know. I think it was fun for a while to have a guy that was just a little crazy that would say wild shit. That guy was the prime minister. I thought that was very uh, appropriate on brand that he was the guy that would, you know, be our, 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 the face of the country on the world stage. And this is him on the world stage. So this is him. What What is this? This is head of government photo session where Berlusconi shouted. Right. Okay. So the queen was there. Obama was there. Right. Yeah, and Queen Elizabeth's in that going, why does he have to shout like that, you know? It's per pretty perfect. Honestly, that's now they're both dead. Um, and it's funny because... Uh, I, I, wait, wait what's, what's, this, what's this tweet that you pulled up? Hang on a second. Some, like, hardcore Islamist? What is this? It says, still remember this heads of government photo session where Berlusconi shouted, Mr. Obama. Wait, he wrote Mr. Obama, but really the guy in the tweet should have wrote, Mr. Obama. Like M E E S T E R, Mies de Mies de Anyway, and the Queen said, "What is this? Why does he have to shout? Every soul will taste death." Quran twenty one thirty five. Death is the ultimate equalizer. That's kind of what I was saying. I mean, they're, they're both dead now. Um, but but in some ways that video is pretty funny because it's like kind of like the polar opposite um, um, essences. Of Italy and Britain respectively you know like I know there's a lot of let's not pretend that all the Brits are you know particularly enlightened individuals there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot of them that aren't but you know how like the typical citizen of the world random citizen of the world will probably look at the British nation and think of the Queen the Royals um, Downton Abbey the cops with the big fucking hats and people that speak like her. Why does he have to shout like, oh, you know? And I think when a lot of people think of Italians, they might think of a, a very loud, you know, a loud short man. There's a picture, uh, there's a picture I sent you of uh, Berlusconi, Berlusconi meaning Obama, meaning Michelle Obama. Um, you, you just showed me a video of it, but there's actually a still shot of it, which is funny. There's a, you looking at the picture right now? Okay, there it is. So, so it captured the moment where he's like basically gawking at her and Obama, <laughs> and Obama's like, you know, frowning, thinking this guy's a buffoon. But, you know, at least Berlusconi's not gay, as he said, right? He's a beautiful woman and he just can't help himself. There's something kind of endearing about that. You know, he just sees a beautiful woman, he admires them, and he just, he just does this. And he's saying to himself, 
quanto è buona. Buona. I mean, he's not saying that. That's a, that's a southern expression, but, you know, it's... <laughs> that's basically like if you ever heard some fucking terrone, a fucking pre, you know, prime minister. It wouldn't be as cool because he would just speak in dialect. He would go, ma guarda quanto è buona, chi la la. Quanto è buona. He had a little bit of, like, the dignified class. Hey, the way he say, yes, hello. Rest in peace, Silvio. He died a happy man. Monza stayed in Serie A. Andrea Petania was his striker. Armando Witz. Isn't it great? He, he decided to build a team from scratch. He got them promoted to Serie A and said, we're just going to have Italians in the team. The one Italian guy in the team got stabbed. Maybe he was like, uh, you know, maybe it was starting to bother Berlusconi that fucking, there was like a non-Italian in the team. I don't know. He, he was like, uh, put a hit out on him, you know? Not, not good. No bueno. Espanolo. No, no good. Many Italians as possible. Like maybe like like Galliani fucking twisted his arm and was like, listen, we gotta sign this guy on loan from Arsenal. Pablo Mari it was, right? He's gonna be a good player and Berlusconi was never a fan of it and he was like, you know what, enough of this. Just I wanna see what it would be like with an Italian back line. Just just for like two games. Just a little shank. Didn't he get like stabbed with a pen? It wasn't a real stabbing. He I think he was playing like two weeks later. You know? But what a season for Monza. I mean Pablo Mari got stabbed, Itzo went to jail. Or got sentenced to jail. Yeah. And Berlusconi died. It, it sent Berlusconi to the grave. But, um, you know, I feel like he just probably had no libido anymore because you don't when you're that old. But he was probably taking stuff just to feel like he could still fuck. I think he enjoyed it, like as a hobby, as an activity almost, you know? And you know what's incredible? No video footage of him fucking anywhere. None anywhere. We were talking before the pod about uh, that porn star named Mariah Mills, who was alleging that um, Zion was was. Well, she wasn't really alleging. I think she was just railing on Zion because Zion Williamson, the basketball player, because he had apparently gotten another uh, like prostitute pregnant or a stripper or something. It's incredible to me, by the way, that so many like successful men. Uh, in sports, in particular, you know, wealthy young guys just get sucked in by these, the these these sirens, these the, these 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 fucking thoughts. It's hilarious. She's still going at it as of fifteen she, minutes ago. As of fifteen minutes ago, she's still going at it. A yeah. week later, that's nuts. She's not letting it go, huh? Well, what is she saying now? She's just posting. She's posting um, Instagram messages between. Does it look like? She, it may not be, you know, it may not be especially enlightened what she's saying, by the way. We're just, you know, read it anyway. It might be. No, it's just DMs between, I don't think this is Zion. She's cutting out the, she's blocking the names and stuff. Okay, well, I don't, okay. well, yeah, that's not really very helpful, is it now? Oh. Is it? This is the baby mama of Zion. Williamson. Oh, shit, so she's messaging her. Hey, what I, if, hey, what I don't it? want my name in the blogs, but I know, uh, covered the name. She sex trafficked me with her boyfriend when I was 14. I can tell you the story if you promise not to disclose my name. It's enough. So, so okay, hang on. Hang on a second. Is Zion Williamson from the hood? Is it, is it unsafe of me to assume? Like, is it, is it wrong of me to assume that? This big black basketball player to assume he's from the hood? Is that wrong? It may not be. A lot, I think it's, a become, it's becoming an increasingly wealthy man's sport. From North Carolina. Okay, well. Okay, so he's, he's not from, he's not from like, uh, he's not from Brooklyn or whatever. He's not from, Okay. Anyway, but, but these fucking, I, I don't know what it is, man, but a lot of these really successful rich athletes just get sucked in by these thoughts, and it's incredible how they get sucked into actual relationships with them, because you could see how it might be a fun thing to do if you have the availability to do it, you know what I'm saying? If you're a porn star, you're kind of famous. If you're a famous porn star, you're still famous, you know? Like you're still notorious, so you're probably able to pick and choose who you date a little bit more. Most women can, by the way, but... If you're prominently posting yourself and stuff, um, you know, and uh, men who see it find it attractive, you're probably not going to link up with a random guy who just messages you. But because, you know, I mean, you're, you're posting your whole ass out, right? Like most men are going to see that and say, okay, th I don't hate looking at this. So if you're a successful man, maybe you message it and think, I'm going to try just for fun. 
But it's incredible to me how many of them actually wind up dating them. Me and my friends have. There's an a number expression. of them that date them, like OnlyFans women. It's like, like, why would you date them? They're not for dating. What's wrong with you? Me and my friends have an expression. We uh, say "fessa one time." Fessa one time. Do that one time. Well, right. Exactly. It's, sure. Yeah. Well, that that's what's perplexing to me is that he pursued like a like a relationship with her. Granted, I mean she's a professional, so <laughs> maybe it was good. But we were talking off pod before about how, like, it's incredible to me how anyone would date them, because. Their entire, uh, their entire history is is visible. You know, it's not one of those things you could just put to the back of your mind. Right? Imagine you start dating a woman at forty and she's been married twice. You know, that that's that, that, those are miles. That's miles on the dash. You know, and you don't, but you don't have to to watch it. You know, you don't have to. And I guess Zion doesn't have to watch it, but he definitely has. I mean, I mean, you can't exactly, uh, exp you know, you can't really be surprised if he doesn't want to pursue a life with you. But here's the, here's the, here's the kicker. Here's what really sucks about that is he didn't like marry his high school sweetheart. You know, he didn't, or he didn't impregnate his high school sweetheart, and it was like, you know, that that porn star was just a fun thing. He he changed her for another porn star, so he has a type, and it's kind of like him saying she's a better porn star than you. It's almost like the, the 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 playing field is leveled at that point. Um, yeah. It makes sense both ways. If you're dating a porn star, or you're fucking with a porn star, and then you wind up just marrying or, or, or settling down with like like a like a wholesome woman, that makes sense. But for the wholesome woman, it, it can make sense if you just say, "Fuck it, my life is boring. I'm gonna go the other way." How did I get to talking about uh, How did I get to talking about porn stars? Jesus. <laughs> how do you how do you remember talking about Monza we're talking about yeah, Monza we're talking about Monza and then somehow yeah. anyway but, but but the thing with Monza is they um, you know it, it is cool that Berlusconi was able to just curate this Italian team put it together they stayed up they were a decent team and um, it was like a couple, there were a couple of Italian cartoon characters you know there's like Armando Izzo, the fucking southern Italian guy who got arrested. There's, um, you know, a couple of uh, really strong technical players who I think actually added something of value to the team, like Pessina and, uh, and, and, and Rovella and Sensi. Sensi didn't play a ton, but, you know, still good tactical ideas there. And then there was Petania, who's a fun one. He's a fun one, um, you know, who... who kind of fits another Italian stereotype, right, of, you know, wanting to live that life, and, I mean, he is living that life, he's a footballer, but he, he really leans into it, and he knows rappers and stuff, and he, he, I think, um, is one of those, and by the way, this exists everywhere, but it is a rather, like, um, n it's a pretty normal thing to see, like, an Italian guy who wants to, uh, just, uh, present himself a certain way go on vacation certain places like you see it in lower levels of italian society where people go on vacation and take picture pictures and they're, they're there and again this happens everywhere but um Italia was just one of those guys you know in north america people go to miami people go to cabo in italy people go to ibiza in europe people go to amigos people go to you know uh yeah a lot of them go to uh, uh, the maldives He's one of those. Anyway, so it was a, it was a cool team he curated. You know, he, he was doing interesting stuff till the end. So, um, you know, best wishes to his uh, wife, his lovely wife, his current wife, who's 50, 40, 40, 50. How long before she marries again? How old is she? 33. She's 33. 33. She's 33. He, and uh, how long has he been with her? When did they marry? I believe she's a she's a congresswoman or a senator or something or she's a she's an MP. Doesn't matter. Don't look her up. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in. <laughs> it sounds like you're looking her up. No, I, I'm looking up uh, how long they've been together. You know, I was going to say don't look her up. I don't care about her as an individual uh, trying to self-actualize in any way shape or form i don't care about her as a person i don't care about her professionally i just want to know how young she was when she first had marital sex with silvio berlusconi who was in his 80s let's I call it 30 they might not have been married 
Well, um, I'm sure she's... Oh, no, they were married. They were married. Not getting a date, though. I'm sure she's devastated. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fucking having caviar right now. Just fi finally. Jesus Christ. She's going to wind up um, probably... The next... I don't think she's... She's 33 years old. She's like... What's the sexual prime? Mid-30s, right where she is? She's going to have sex again. The next guy... She, the, the rebound guy is going to be very young. That's my that's my guess. Keep we, we'll keep tabs on her. Well, we may never know. It might be done in private, but... She'll post her Instagram. I don't think she will. I don't think she's going to no. post... Her having sex with a random no, guy? No, but you'll see, you'll see a guy in the pictures or something. She might have. Eventually. Maybe. But who, she has another kid with a guy. Does she have any kids with Berlusconi? When was the last kid he had? How how young is his youngest kid? And you He's know, probably got grandchildren older than his kids. I would say so. Probably. There's a chance. You know, I don't actually I don't actually care. I don't actually care. Now now it's just let's not speak ill of the dead. I mean it's you know. Let's not speak ill of the dead. He was um, he was a pioneer. He was a fucking pioneer, man. He's, I'm telling you, he saw Inter lose the Champions League final. And was like, that's it. I'm, I've peaked. I peaked. Um, what do we make of that game, man? Is Lukaku finished? I think Lukaku's. Uh, I don't know if Lukaku's ever coming back from from that. Uh, psychologically, that's that's tough. Um, you see who he's dating? Megan the Stallion. Yeah. Not Megan the Stallion. Megan the Stallion. The one and only Stallion. Yeah. Bro, I thought Jack Grealish was dating Megan Thee Stallion. You see that? If you can see that picture of Jack Grealish with that fucking... That Nigel woman in the fucking hotel room all those years ago? I didn't see that. There was this picture of Jack Grealish in a bathrobe. Good luck finding it, bro. Um, <laughs> there was this picture of Jack Grealish in a hotel. We're not gonna, we can't overlay it on YouTube. Um, he was in a bathrobe in a hotel lying on a bed with a larger black woman with... Uh, with, with with her tits out, and he was he looked over the moon, and uh, yeah, I don't know. And I here's the thing, so I, I think Jack Grealish played that whole game, did he? Or basically, he started right. He's looking good. He's younger. He's a Champions League winner. We know what he likes. Is it a little bit much if he tries to steal making the stallion from Rom Lukaku right now? Anything's possible. Anything's possible. I mean, it was tough, you know, it, it, it was tough, uh, tough to take, probably, you know, it, it, for, for Inter fans. It was not um, an easy win. I mean, I've been there. It was, or sorry, it was not an easy loss to take, and, I, and I've been there. What's worse, you know, 5 nil loss, 5 nil drubbing, or that? And probably that, much more painful. They feel like they could have tied it up at the end, and, um, and they didn't. But, you, you know, I, 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 I don't... I, does anyone really give a shit what I have to say about, about this in the game and the analysis? I mean, they, they played a good game. It was a final. The cool thing about finals is you'll always have a really good game, usually. Usually. Um, usually you'll have a good game because there's pressure on and stuff. So, you know, they're not playing as relaxed as when they're playing against Bournemouth on a, on, you know, on a Sunday in February. Um, but, yeah, Italian teams went 0-4 in finals in the last week, dog. Um, Fiorentina lost the conference, conference league final. And um, Roma lost the Europa. Roma lost the Europa League. And yesterday, the Italy U20 team lost the World Cup final. Um, I will say, we're kind of rubbing salt in the wound a little bit with that one. Do we really need to fucking drag down these 19-year-old kids? It's basically the World Juniors, but for football, right? It's the coolest and best uh, World Cup that they put on at youth level, the U20 World Cup is. But no one gives a shit about it, right? Like, um, like, uh, you watched the game yesterday. Were you nervous at any point? Kind of like when Italy's playing a normal game, right? When a chance gets created and you're like, oh, oh, oh. It's not the same. No, it's not. Ex exactly. It's not. It's not. You're just like, eh. Uruguay scored late, 86 minute, 1-1-0. One, one, and I just went, eh. Because um, here's the thing. I mean, when you do well in that tournament, it's a good omen. Maybe Italian youth teams are... Not actually as shit as we think. Maybe they're producing better talent than we give them credit for. Maybe we just have to, you know, throw them in. But but again, the thing with these tournaments is a lot of those guys don't ever wind up playing, like, for a top-class club. 
it's very rare. You might get like a couple per team, generally. Like even if you look back at teams that have won shit, you'll have guys that have a professional career, but it's not like that whole team's gonna walk right into the fucking Azzurri squad. You, you might have Baldanzi, and you might have Casadei, and that's it. And um, Casadei may not even. You know, he, most of his goal, he scored two penalties on like three headers or four headers, which is impressive. I think he scored seven goals in the tournament. He was the best player of the tournament, but like he scored one from open play, which was beautiful in the semifinal. I don't know if you saw it. It was a fucking really nice goal. Obviously, he's a very good fucking player, but he's the best among his age group, which is relevant. That, that's good. It's important. But like Ricardo, Orso, uh, fucking, I think in 2017, I think Ricardo Orsolini scored five goals and was the top scorer in that tournament. And now he's, you know, he's a good player. He's a serviceable player in Serie A who maybe arguably could get called out to the Azzurri. He's being linked with the Juve. I wouldn't hate it. I kind of like him, to be honest with you. Play San Angel Di Maria? I don't hate him at all. He was at Juve. They were supposed to... That's true. Yeah, they, they kept loaning him out. He was supposed to be our player and he wound up he wound up leaving and it's fine. Shit happens, but, you know. Um, but, but, you know, again, top scorer in that tournament, plays for Bologna now. Good player, playing in the top flight in Europe, but he's not Aguero, you know? <laughs> He's never reached those heights. He probably never will. Um, so, so again, so what, what do you really expect from this shit? It doesn't matter that Italy lost the U20 Euro, no, uh, World Cup, whatever. No one really gives a fuck at the end of the day. There are some people that are being cynical saying, oh, you know, it's it's bad that they lost another fucking, uh, another final. It's 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 fun. I mean, it is funny, but it's not bad. It's, it's not bad. A lot of people are saying, you know, it's indicative of how Italian football is dead. It's like, well, oh, why? They've sent a team to a tournament, a bunch of other, you know, against a bunch of other young kids and, they wound up doing well. So it's a good sign. But what the fuck do we make of that? It's like, shit, we're producing some of the best talent in the world still. Well, why are we not? By the way, and maybe we shouldn't read too much into this because, like, Israel, I think, they won, won the third, third place, place yeah. uh, medal. I mean, I have a theory, actually, about the U20 World Cup that you don't want to be the team that wins it. It actually would have been bad if Italy won it. We're Italian. We would have pulled for, you know, we we would have been happy if Italy had won. We were watching the game hoping that Italy won. We'd pull for Italy. Our, our family's from Italy. Um, if you want the best for them, as Italians, you don't want them to win. Because the teams that generally win that don't ever do anything. I think Ghana won it once. Serbia won it once. You don't want to be a country that gets excited about winning a U20 World Cup. I think they took, like, a national holiday the day after, like, Serbia won the U20 World Cup. They're, they might have all got, like, a knighthood or something. I'm not even kidding. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not fucking with you. It, it, it was, I think Ukraine won in 2019. Now look at them. Fucking half the team's joining the Azov Battalion, fucking fighting off Putin's men, you know? Half the team is probably dead. <laughs> half that 2019 team is... Never mind playing for the national team. Never mind playing pro football. They're deceased. And a quarter of them don't have heads. They've been beheaded. It was blown off, you know? Whatever, you know. Um, Argentina have won it before. The only team that's really had success in like the last 20 years that's won that tournament is Argentina. Every other one has kind of like not had success. I think the best player at the 2017 tournament was Dominic Solanke from England. So, just to put into perspective how meaningless the whole thing is. Um, but man, I want to just highlight something here. Pio Esposito, his name might be Francesco, on the team sheet, it's Pio, it's Francesco Pio Esposito. I thought it was Pio growing up. I don't know, or growing up, like as if I knew this kid since I was a kid. He's like 16 years old or 17 years old. Um, for the past couple of years that I've been aware of him, excuse me, I thought his name was Fran I thought his name was Pio Esposito. Now apparently it's Francesco Pio Esposito. Or it doesn't matter him. He's Salvatore Esposito's brother, the footballer who plays for Spezia, and he's Sebastiano Esposito's brother, who played for Bari on loan from Inter. The three of them played on the same day. For, respectively, in the case of Pio, the U20 World Cup, in the case of Salvatore, the eldest, um, a spot in Serie A, lost it with Spezia, and in the case of Sebastiano, promotion to Serie A with Bari, lost it. <laughs> like, think about that. I think the whole, dude, I think, I think that'll kill your gene pool. I think you have to end your gene pool when that happens right there, bro. Your bloodline's done. Three brothers who are all professional footballers all lose, like, Cup finals, basically, on the same fucking day. How insane is that? Back to back to back. Even I did, did you imagine being their father? This, this this should be in the headlines. I I keep seeing that Ethan Ampadu lost three relegation battles in three years in a row. 
That, that's a lot more entertaining. I than... saw that. Too. I thought of that too, actually, when I was like, wasn't he a fucking Venezia last year? I'm like, fuck, what? I didn't even realize it was three. Where was it two years uh, ago? Two In Germany? Years, uh, I think it was. Let me look this up. I'll take your word for it. Fine. Wherever the fuck he was. I know he was at Venezia last year. And I was like, fuck. Chelsea keeps shipping this poor, <laughs> this poor fucking kid off to these garbage teams. But um, no. I mean, Sheffield. Che Sheffield, okay. Can you imagine being that kid's father, though? Those kids' fathers. Because legitimate, think about it. They have parents and family who watched every one of their games because it's a big day for any of those kids. And back to back to back, long, boom, boom, boom. Your wife cheated on you. She took the money and she shot you in the head. But it, but you're not dead. You have time to think about it. You know, she like shot you in the chin and your chin's like hanging off. You know, <laughs> like and you and your brain is fully intact. You're just in this, an excruciating amount of pain, but your brain is intact. You're bleeding up. Your brain is processing everything that's happening. That's, that's horrible. It's like one of the, it's got to be one of the worst. I don't have a larger point here, but it's got to be one of the worst days in football ever. That's got to be the worst day that a family's ever had in soccer ever, right? Um, yeah, whatever. Then also last week the Saudis just took over football. Um, I think they signed, they signed Benzema. You're telling me today that uh, they signed Angolo Kante. I say they, like, j just who signed him? Uh, Saudi Arabia. The country of Saudi Arabia signed him. Nobody knows what team they're playing for. They might play for different teams every week, for all I know. Nobody fucking knows. They tried getting Max Allegri, and he couldn't be pulled away. They, he wouldn't do it. Because he has work to do at Juventus Football Club. <laughs> Which is funny, because... The only way you're getting rid of him is Saudi Arabia, right? The only way you're getting rid of him is if, like, another team tries to get him as a manager. And, and the only way that you're going to get him as a manager is by doubling his money. And they tried to, and they said no. I, I was his just... camp said no. His agent, him, his family said no. We, we might have to cut this out. My mind just went terrorist ball. What do you mean? You get it? Oh, no. I like it. Oh, right. Yeah, that, that, that's getting cut out. <laughs> <laughs> I would keep that in, but you're the one who you're the one who has executive control over that. Bring the terrorist ball to Saudi. Bring the terrorist ball to Saudi Arabia, exactly. <laughs> Bro, it's true. Yeah, P yeah, no, no, dude, I like it. He is a football terrorist. He's a football terrorist, bro. He's fucking. Ter he's terrorized UF fans. Yeah, he signed for Al Qaeda. No, right, that's not even a lowbrow joke. Like the team names actually sound like, you know, they sound like that. Al Hilal, Al Qaeda. But Angelo Kante is uh, he's playing there, man. Uh, okay, he's thirty-two, so he's not that old. He's not that old. He went for the money. Where is he playing now? Is he at Chelsea still? Well, no, he was. Was he still he at was, Chelsea? Yeah. Holy fuck! So. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of cool to me that they're going to have, um, they're going to play that song a lot. Angolo, Angolo, but they're not going to be able to sing it, right? Angolo, hello, my friend. Well, they just legalized Angolo, listening Angolo, to music, right? Or something like that? Did they just legalize listening or to music? Or public I believe that. No, 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 just, like that. Uh, sure, I, music is now legal in Saudi Arabia. I'll believe anything you say about Saudi Arabia. You could tell me that. You could tell me that they finally outlawed fucking, like, you know, women under the age of two. And I'd say, all right, checks out, based on what we hear. But, I mean, it's kind of cool. It's cool that guys are getting paid. I don't, I don't give a shit. People are like, oh, football's dying. We're losing football. No, we're not. These are two players. No one gives a fuck. I love Angelo Kante. Okay, who, who cares? Then let, let him be happy. Let him make his money. We got chipmunks running around this backyard. I was saying before, the chipmunks are kind of like um, little calabres men. They're like little calabres squirrels. They kind of look like Berlusconi. It's like a little Berlusconi squirrel, you know? Jumping around, little small. Chipmunks are kind of like Mexican squirrels, you know? <laughs> just little guys. They're just having a fiesta under the fucking deck right now. They're all just climbing under under through the uh, the garden. But yeah. Um, but I was, I, was really, uh, I was really annoyed last week, just... All the news that fucking broke. I don't know what Mancini did. The Roberto Mancini. So look, let's pivot here to the Azzurri for a sec. Um, let's end on this note because uh, it's a big week. 
Yazzuri are playing a Nations League semifinal. They're going to be going for a, a fifth straight Italian Cup final loss. Uh, this week, if they beat Spain, they'll be facing off against, is it either Holland or Croatia? I think it is. I believe it's one of those two. It should be, uh, it should be cool. It would be a good game. Um, if you beat Spain, you got to think that it's a winnable final. But, um, so I don't understand what happened here. So, last week we did a whole breakdown on who Mancini called up. And then, like, hours after we banked the pod... He called up a bunch of Inter players who hadn't gotten called up. So Di Marco got called up, Barella, Barella got called up, Acerbi got called up, and so did Bastoni. Um, Acerbi had a good Champions League final to his credit. He kind of pocketed Haaland. I'm not sure that Federico Baschirotto has the same success against him. Granted, I mean, it'd be like, you know, Viking against Viking. Those guys are fucking both massive. But I, I don't know. Like, Acerbi just positioned himself pretty well. I, I thought he had a decent match um you know he'll probably play with Borucci against Spain I mean listen he's going with the guys he knows I didn't know this so I, I guess the squad had to be cut down to 23 I guess last week the squad that we read off was like 25 guys so two guys were gonna have to get replaced or we're gonna have to get cut anyway then what he went and did was he replaced guys I guess before the deadline to submit the roster I don't know if anything changed I don't know if there was like a like a scheduling change, or if maybe he just wanted to get guys into camp, see how they looked, and you know, maybe he didn't like them. He was like, yo, fucking, no bueno. This is, we got to call up the fucking guys who are going to be tired and sad or drunk, one or the other, right? But uh, it's a little fucked up to me that last week he didn't even call up Romagnoli, and he didn't even call up, uh, you know, Casale, because if that's the B team, you would think that, you know, if they're guys he wants to take a look at, you would think that they'd be closer to the lineup. I don't know, just... I don't know. I don't know if I'm making sense here, but Acerbi and Bastoni are normally getting called up as center backs. They're not. And he doesn't call up Romagnoli and Casale. Instead, he calls up Gatti, Baschirotto, and Buongiorno. I don't hate Gatti. I don't hate Buongiorno. I, I don't know enough about him. I think you know Casale and Romagnoli is probably a smarter decision. I fucking bring two, you know, a pair together. But anyway, so I posted about it on TikTok and... Uh, just kind of reacting to the squad. And um, there's this one guy who comments on, like, every one of my Azzurri TikToks whenever I fucking mention Willy Nyonto. This fucking guy, he, this guy actually has me questioning my own sanity now. Because he'll always say, Nyonto's trash, he's African. He'll say, Nyonto is trash and he's African, so there's that. He, like, he kind of, he, I'm paraphrasing him, but he kind of, like, that's the tone. He's African too, so there's that. Like, he's making a good point where he's saying, don't forget, bro, he's African, so there's that. And, bro, like, he's been commenting it, like, relentlessly under every fucking video that I post about Yazzurri and mention Willy Nyonto. He says, Nyonto? Like, he's incredulous. He's terrible, and he's African. And now I'm starting to doubt myself. I'm like, is Nyonto terrible? And other people have to come in and comment and say, no, Nyonto's a baller, you know? And he is, but... Um, but, I don't know. So, so Zakani got cut. I think the weird thing there is that Zaniolo was kept and Zakani was cut. That's the weirdest thing. I mean, like, Fratesi probably gets cut out if Tonali's not with the U21 team. I don't hate the team. I actually kind of... So last week I said I thought we would get killed. Largely it was because of all the, you know, unfamiliar names in defense. That's what I thought. Um, now it's like I'm in a weird spot where I kind of feel like... I'd like to win the games, and I don't feel confident we're going to win the games with Alessandro Bongiorno and Federico Baschirotto. Just because... Just because. You know, I don't know. Whatever. Because... I'm not familiar with them. In my mind, they're not Azzurri players. They could be, hypothetically, but in my mind, they're not. So then I see Acerbi and Bastoni, and I say, okay, it makes a little more sense, a little bit more reliable, but at the same time, I'm like, well, I don't really want Acerbi. Because I've, I've said that Acerbi sucks for so long now. He's 34, so so next year he'll be 30. Is he 35? I think he's 35, actually. He's more than 88, so he's 34 or 35. So at a certain point, you just know a guy's going to expire, and you're kind of just waiting for that to happen. So like... The good movies to preemptively get ahead of it. I don't, I don't know, but there's this. I have this idea that he just sucks because I've seen him play at times for the Azzurri where he, fucking, he's just ass. He, his positioning is awful, and and really the problem with him is he's not Chiellini. Does that make sense? He's not Chiellini, and uh, yeah, it was always going to be hard when he retired, and and it has been since. So, I mean, what are you going to do? But I would say, um. I would say, like, it's it's a good team overall. I mean, 
he's got Raspadori, he's got Immobile, he's got Immobile, and he's got he's got fucking Matteo Retegi in the lineup. You kind of need three strikers because if you have two and one gets hurt, you're fucked, right? You sub one out for the other, and then you have no other guy who plays a center forward. Like he has that kind of can, but not really. He's not a center forward. Zakani kind of can, but not really. He's not a center forward, so you need three. Who else is it gonna be? You know, if not Immobile, then 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 who, right? I'm not the biggest Immobile fan, but Immobile is not going to start, probably, right? Stamaka. He's injured, right? So that's the issue. He's injured right now. He got injured, I think, against uh, Malta like two months ago. So who the fuck else are you going to take? Like, Zakani definitely deserves to... Here's the weird thing about Zakani. He, he's like... Zakani's one of the best players in Serie A. I mean, that's really what it comes down to, right? But, like, so is Federico Chiesa. The problem is Federico Chiesa didn't have as good a season. So a lot of people are kind of like, you know, not as into him right now. They think, ah, oh, you know what? He's he's not looked great. But you know what he's capable of? And it's probably like better than better than Zakani on his day. You know what I'm saying? So I, who who gives a shit, you know? Like like The the weird thing about national teams is it's just like um it's a feel-good thing. When the guy you think deserves to get called up gets called up, you're like, ah, oh, that, that's good, that's right. Even if he stays on the bench and doesn't play, you're like, oh, at least he's there. Versus it's, oh, he's not called up, and then it's, all oh, he's not playing. There's two different levels to it, and, and there's no guarantee that, like, Zakani would have even played, but the, the thing is, when you know, if he's in the lineup, and if he's in the lineup and you're winning, nobody gives a shit that he's not playing. If he's in the lineup and you're losing, people are like, you should have subbed him in. If he's not in the lineup and you lose, people will also say you should have called him up. But if he called him up, he obviously wouldn't have been the starter. He would have been on the fucking bench. So he doesn't make a fucking difference anyway, right? You know that the guy is Nyonto and the guy is Chiesa. That's it, right? I think Nyonto and Chiesa are probably going to start. And, um, you know, if I had to guess, I think I think Radegi starts. Probably. Uh, I would like it. I don't know if it'll actually happen. I wouldn't be shocked if he winds up playing Immobile. I will lose my fucking goddamn mind if he does. I'd much rather see Matteo Radegi, um play. That guy's got to come over to Italy this summer. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I, anyway, look, I'm looking forward to breaking down the Italy game. Game, games, whatever it winds up being next week. Um, I have a wedding on Sunday during the Nations League final. My cousin's getting married. She decided to get married during a fucking Italy game. Bitch. I'm kidding. But, uh, no, I mean, I don't, I don't know what we're going to do there. Um, hopefully they just lose. And I want to, you know, just lose. We'll lose against Spain. We'll lose against Spain anyway. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Why don't we get your take on this here? Like, where's, where's your mind at with this sort of thing? We're gonna talk about it next week when it's in the rearview mirror. There's a lot of other shit that's happened this week that we, you know, we made more sense to talk about first. Let's not like preview this too, too much here. I mean, it's gonna be coming out on Wednesday, and uh, it's gonna be like coming out. I guess it's like you know a little over 24 hours before the game, 36 hours before the game. So some people are gonna be listening to this after the first game has already happened. We're gonna get more into like the rearview shit next week. But what do you, where's your mind at? What do you think about the team? I don't know. I think Zakani probably should have got called up over Nyoto just because Nyoto's African. <laughs> that was a joke. Um, no, 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 no. You raise a good point. Nah. He's, uh, Afri- he's African. If, if he's, I, if he's, I, tra- he's trash. If I, no, if no, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. Not because he's African. Not because he's African. That's racist. You don't call him up because he's trash. And he's trash because he's African. You see the you see the distinction. I'm, I'm, we're just gonna leave everything in. I'm gonna be the racist this podcast. We'll leave the Allegri comment. Maybe maybe that could be your thing where you just say <laughs> you, you just you just say off color, like kind of like off key, uh, like I could be I, just I, I blue, be that guy blue, in, blue blue uh, racial jokes. Yeah. I'll, I'll be that guy in your TikTok comments. I'll just yeah. behind the camera and I'll yeah. just say whatever. What guy in my TikTok comments? The guy, the guy. Yeah. You, yeah, you just, yeah. You I'll, just... I'll be his voice, but on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Give him a voice. Yeah. Maybe we should f- get his phone number. You want to call him? We should call him. You want to get call... his take on? Want to call the racist guy? We should get his take on the uh, the uh, Italy lineup. Yeah, it's not a bad call because that guy doesn't give a fuck about anything. For him to be posting that openly, he'd probably be like, yeah, I don't care. I think his name's Lou. He's like, yeah, I'm Lou. I, I'm Lou, and I'm Lou from Pennsylvania. I don't give a shit. He's like a hairdresser. So he's like a hairdresser, some Italian guy in fucking Pennsylvania, who just uh, is comfortable saying, "No, I want Italians in Gazzurri." You know, like there, there are a lot of people like in Italy that would do that very openly a few years ago. They'd be like, "Balotelli, no." 
perché non è proprio italiano. Like they would, they would, they would say that, you know, openly. So maybe we could just get him on and just say why. Have him explain his reasoning. Well, we know his reasoning. He's African. He's African. He's African. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I'm, I'm down to, I'm down to maybe call. Uh, fuck, I didn't think we'd have time for this, but I'm down to call this. Okay, let, let's end this with a, let's end this with a fucking, let's end this with a phone call. Let's end this whole pod with a call. Let me just adjust here for a sec. So, if you want me to prank call someone again, write in, DM me. I'm Sam Adamo, or send it, send an email to calculatorpodcast at gmail dot com. Um, better bet is to send me a DM, but sometimes I don't see them. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, fucking email me if you're like concerned about whether or not I'll see it, say who the guy is and, um, we'll give it a shot. You know, if it's uh, if it's compelling, so we're calling a, it's a guy who said, you can, you call my uncle's deli in, uh, Westchester, New York guy's name is big Mike. Where are we going with this? What the, what's the game plan? I think we're just, the goal here is we're going to try to just keep this man on the phone for as long as possible because apparently he has a very short fuse. Calling Mama Rosa's Deli and Sons. Mama Rosa and Sons Deli in Westchester. Shout out. Apparently it's very good. But um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what this guy says. We'll see what this guy's like. So let me just pull this up here. So hmm. should have probably fucking got this on. Should have got it on speed dial before. Starting the pod. Uh, here we go. Okay, great. It's a catering company. It says they're open. Great. I was told that apparently he has a statue business also. Now, here's the thing. He's going to be New York Italian. Should I sound New York Italian or should I sound Montreal Italian? Maybe I'll just switch between the two and confuse him. Can you hold it here? Blast it. Hello? Hello? Oh, fuck. I fucked it. Hang up. Hang up. Hang up. I realized I fucked up. I gave you the fucking phone and I need to be. <laughs> I'm acting like we have a full radio set up over here. You didn't have it on speaker. No, I did. I think I did have it on speaker, but the thing is, if I'm speaking across the yeah, table no, it's and it's, work. it's connected to your mic, it won't work. I'm acting like we have a whole fucking radio set up here where I could just speak and it'll somehow project. Okay, I gotta call him back up. Oh, poor bastards. Poor lady. What should I do? I'm not going to torture her. She seemed nice. I'm going to, I'm going to, I was told to torture Big Mike and that's it. So. Hello? Yes, hello. Um, is Big Mike there? Hold on, please. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, hi. Is this, uh, is this Big Mike? Yeah, who's this? Hey, how you doing? I'm, uh, I'm Dino. I'm from Montreal. I'm, uh, I'm a friend of, uh, I'm a friend of, uh, Sal. Yeah, he uh he told he told me I might consider uh using your service. I'm coming down to New York in uh, a couple of weeks. I saw you guys cater. Um, I wanted to know something. Where's your guys? Where's your guys' stuff imported from? Stuff is in, well. I got boards at mostly everything. So. Where where about? It's, You know, some things might be from Canadian, like mortadella and stuff like that. But uh, we use Hormel, Chiderio, Boar's Head. Those are the brands we use. Boar's Head. What is that you need? Yeah, Boar's Head. I was actually hoping for Boar's Head. Okay. That's no nice. Problem. All right, cool, cool. I'm coming down in July. So um, let me, let me ask you something. Just it's, it's, it maybe a little bit of an odd question, but um, I, I gotta I gotta ask this. I mean. It's just because because I'm it's my, my grandfather raised me this way and uh, he was a very political man and uh, I don't mean to be you know I don't mean to pry here and I understand it's a bit of a personal question but you know we do need to kind of just understand it because what I'm doing here is uh, it's actually an event that's got like political undertones and I got to make sure something what what are your thoughts on Silvio Berlusconi he died today Who? Silvio Berlusconi the former prime minister of Italy oh I don't even know him so <laughs> you don't even know him. You don't no. even know. That's probably good. Ignorance is bliss. Listen, um, I was told you have a statue business. Is that correct? No. Who's this? I, let's 
listen, I don't even know who I'm talking to, to be honest. All right, I gotta go. I'm a little busy right now. Um, but, but no, but but it's a relevant question. I was told that you have a statue important. That you have a statue business. No, and you... my family does, not me. Oh, your family does. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, do you have do you have the number of someone I might be able to call because I got family in in Puglia, who I'm trying to import like a Virgin Mary statue of, um, because I I don't know why. It's not worth it. It's too heavy. It's you. By the time you you export it to Puglia. It'll cost you a fortune. More than the statues work. Go to Puglia and go buy the statue. You're better off. But I don't live in Puglia. What? I don't live in Puglia. Okay, so go to uh, uh, exporting person and and uh, or or go online any place in Puglia, buy it and send it to your family's house. Yeah, but here's here's my here's my thinking though. I'm moving down to New York in a month. Maybe I'll come meet you face to face. It'd be a real pleasure. I'd really I'd really love to meet you, sir. But my point is. Like I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need something local. I'm gonna want to touch the thing, and I'm gonna want to. All right. So when you come to New York, you come see us, okay? Where about is it? Is it, is it near uh, you guys in White Plains? Yeah, yeah. Take oh. it easy. Have a good day. All right. Tell you, tell your nephew Timmy we said hi. Thank you. Yeah, tell Timmy I said hi too. I don't know. I have no nephew. Goodbye. Ciao. You don't got no nephew. <laughs> what the fuck? I think the, I think the guy might have fucking pranked us. He said I don't got no nephew. He said, my uncle, Big Mike, owns this place. It's a great family business. I think he might have been... Do you think maybe uh, he wanted me to, like, prank call his mortal enemy or something? Maybe. Well, th this changes everything. I thought this was a good natured prank call where we were going to get to, like, fuck around with the guy's uncle. And at the end, I was going to let him off the hook and say, hey, you're on the bordello. Tell your, tell your nephew, Timmy, we said hi. And he goes, I don't got no nephew. You got a message, Timmy. We gotta get some clarification. Fucking hell. I think I gotta block Timmy. Timmy's not allowed to listen to a fucking pot anymore, dude. Timmy, don't fucking contact me no more. You don't got no uncle. What's going on? You, you don't got no nephew. I think maybe he just doesn't trust me. Maybe he doesn't trust me and he's like, you know what? This guy's asking too many questions. I did say Sal and he didn't have any questions. So that was a good pick. That was a good choice of name. Sal's a good New York name. You just get right into it right away. You don't let him ask any questions. He was gonna ask Sal who? Sal who? You just get right into it. I need something. Maybe I should have said... Fuck, I wish he hadn't hung up. I was going to say, let me leave you my number. You give me a call. We can chat sometime. I'll tell you who Silvio Berlusconi is. Big Mike. I think the, the accent kind of morphed there. <laughs> it did. It did. It went started little... off with the New York accent and then... It went away, then it came back. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you said... What do you say? Go to Puglia to get it? Yeah. I don't live there. Check out Mama Rosa's Deli. All right, cool. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like he threw me off at the end when he said I don't got no nephew. I thought he was gonna say, yeah, my uncle's a real piece of shit. Tell him to go fuck himself, you know. But like, none of that. I really thought he'd be like, oh yeah, my, my nephew's a piece of work. Fuck. He might have been a little scared. He might have been a little scared. Yeah. Why is why is that? I don't know. What you were asking. <laughs> you, don't, you don't ask too many questions. Yeah, exactly. I should have, uh, you know, should have asked. I should have got the name of the statue company. You call them and say, listen, can you ship contraband overseas? <laughs> you know, and the contraband is like, <laughs> it's like, listen, I got some shit I want to listen. I got some stuff. I want to send it to Naples. Listen, I don't know if you're familiar with Naples, but. It is what it is, okay. A contraband. Don't ask, don't tell. Sir, we're going to need to know what it is. Uh, listen, I'll pay you a fucking premium. Just sh shut up. I'll load it for you. Fucking feeling the feeling the statues. Shit, these are a little heavy. <laughs> Jesus. wonder what the fuck he's importing, you know? And, uh, be a good prank to play, you know? You just, like, you just, like, set up, like, a fucking, like, a pressure, not like a pressure bomb, but, like, um, there was a way you could like hook up the truck to like a device where you click a button and boom just releases pressure and it just cracks all the statues and you just hear like cracking in the back. The guy's panicking, thinks all this contraband's in the back. And he goes into the fucking back of the truck and it's just all Napoli jerseys. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's just all Napoli jerseys. Or it's just copies of like the book Gomorra. Like the original book by Roberto Saviano. <laughs> anyway. So we got Azzurri games coming up this week. Um Rest in peace to Silvio Berlusconi. A man like no other. Um, you know, hopefully the boys in blue can do it for him. Um, they'll be... Do you think they'll be a little fired up? The Milan players? 
Are there any in the team? I'm trying to think. Calabria never gets called up. He fucking never gets called up, bro. I got little dude, bro. I got caught between two words. I fucking hate when I do that, bro. When I say, he gets, he never gets called up, dude, bro. I can't even fucking speak. I'm so fucking, fucking joke, bro. Fucking imitate Berlusconi, bro. That's how we're gonna end it off. Just, just fucking, just end it off on a comedian. Yeah, ciao, ragazzi. Io me ne vado. Io sono morto. Okay. Alla prossima. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Ci facciamo le feste bunga bunga. Okay. Forza Italia. Forza Italia. Forza Azzurri. We'll catch you next week. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, do the algo shit. I don't know. If you're watching on YouTube, like it. Leave a comment. Nobody does. Nobody will. Maybe you will. I don't know. Leave a comment. Feel free to. Say, Yonto's trash, bro. He's African. And just fucking... That'd be so cruel, dude. If somebody just wanted to ruin the pod and just... This is just make it look like I have a fucking legion of like 200 fucking... <laughs> 200 fucking little neo neo fascist white supremacist italians you know <laughs> okay all right we'll catch you soon till next time ciao